Legend has it that Isaac Newton once sat in the stands of a sumo match mounting on popcorn when suddenly, BAM! A 180 kilograms wrestler charged across the ring, sending his opponent flying. Newton jumped on his feet shouting, Hey, hey, that is it. Mass, acceleration and force. This changes everything. And just like that, the laws of motion were born. Okay, okay, maybe that is not exactly how it happened, but it is fun to imagine it that way, right? Today we are diving into the physics of sumo wrestling and how do these massive athletes move so fast? What is the science behind their explosive power? Just how many calories does it take to launch someone out of the ring? And do sumo wrestlers defy the laws of physics strapping because we are about to break it all down? From momentum to energy to force, sumo wrestling is a masterclass in physics. So let's step into the ring and explore the science behind these incredible athletes. First, let's look at Newton's first law. An object in rest stays at rest. And an object in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by an external force. In other words, inertia. Sumo wrestlers are masters of inertia. When a sumo wrestler is pushed, he seems to maintain their position for a moment despite the force acted on them. However, they rely on technique, balance and body positioning to resist that inertia and avoid being pushed out of the ring. When a sumo wrestler is standing still, their massive body has a lot of inertia. It takes a huge force to get them moving. But once they start charging, that same inertia makes them incredibly hard to stop. It is like trying to stop a fierce train with your bare hands. During the touchy eye or initial charge, a wrestler can go from 0 to 50 miles per hour in just a few seconds. That is a lot of force to overcome their own inertia and their opponents. Next, Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. This is where sumo really shines. Their massive size means they can generate enormous force even with relative modest acceleration. Let's do some mass here. Imagine a sumo wrestler weighing 180 kilograms. That is about 400 pounds charging at 4 meters per second. The force they generate is force equals mass times acceleration. So that is 180 kilograms times 4 meters per second squared will be equal to 720 newtons. That is equivalent to about lifting 73 kilograms off the ground in one second. And surprisingly, they do this with their feet every day. True shiko. Sometimes about 200 to 500 times. That is why sumo wrestlers have such powerful lower bodies. They are basically human catapults. Next, let's talk about mass and momentum. In physics, momentum is calculated as mass times velocity. Sumo wrestlers have a lot of mass, which means even a relatively small amount of velocity can generate a huge amount of momentum. Let's do some quick mass here again. Imagine a sumo wrestler weighing 180 kilograms, charging at 4 meters per second. Their momentum would be 720 kilograms meters per second. For comparison, a 90 kilograms Olympic runner running at 10 meters per second would have a momentum of 90 kilograms times 10 meters per second, which is equal to 900 kilograms per second, which is almost as close as 720 kilograms per second. So even though the sumo wrestler is slower, their massive size means they are carrying nearly as much momentum as an Olympic runner. 
that is why they can bulldoze their opponents out of the ring now let's talk about newton's third law for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction when a sumo wrestler pushes against their opponent their opponent pushes back with the same force when a wrestler pushes an opponent with 720 newtons their opponent pushes back with 720 newtons but here is a trick when a wrestler charges at 720 newtons the other wrestler can angle their body to redirect the force upwards suddenly this wrestler isn't fighting with the other sumo wrestler he are fighting with gravity too sumo wrestlers often use this to their advantage by timing their movement so that the reaction works to their favor by redirecting their opponent's force a wrestler can use their own momentum against them now let's talk about energy required to perform these feats sumo wrestlers consume a staggering amount of calories to fuel their bodies on average a sumo wrestler eats around 5000 to 7000 calories per day that is more than double what an average person needs rumors have it that the energy sumo wrestlers emit can power a tv set for 80 hours whether that is true let's calculate sumo wrestlers eat 5000 to 7000 calories a day one calorie is equal to 4184 joules so 7000 calories is equal to 29288000 joules let's assume a tv uses around 100 watts this can vary but 100 watts is a reasonable average and one watt is equal to one joule per second so let's calculate energy and see energy is equal to power times time so we have 100 watts times 80 hours times 3600 seconds per hour which is equal to 28,800,000 joules which is almost the same as the 29,288 joules we got earlier so that is true sumo wrestlers can power a 100 watt tv for about 80 hours impressive now the rumors are fairly justified but where does all the energy go let's calculate the energy required to push an opponent out of the ring if a wrestler exerts a force earlier calculated of 720 newtons over a distance of two meters the work done is work equals force times distance 220 newtons times two meters which is equal to 1440 joules that is about 34 percent of food calories but remember this is just for one push a wrestler might perform dozens of these explosive moments not to mention the energy needed for training maintaining their weight and even moving around next up we have agility despite their size sumo wrestlers are surprisingly fast their footwork is precise and deliberate allowing them to shift their weight and change direction quickly this agility comes from years of training including exercises like shiko or leg stamping which strengthens their legs and improves balance think of it like a pyramid wide at the base and lower to the ground that is why sumo wrestlers can move so quickly without losing their balance it is all about physics so the next time you watch a sumo match remember what you are seeing is a result of years of training incredible physical strength and a deep understanding of physics these athletes are proof that size and speed aren't mutually exclusive of course speed isn't just about raw power it is also about technique and to the last question do sumo wrestlers defy physics 
sumo wrestlers might seem to defy certain principles of physics in the ring, but the answer remains, they don't break any laws of nature. The fact remains true that they are rather masters on the application on physics, which would make Isaac Newton very, very proud. Sugiwa Sumode Nihongo Manabu Today's Japanese word focus is tachiai. The sumo word tachiai you might know to mean initial charge in sumo. But let's break it down. First, we have tachi. Tachi. This is the noun form of tatsu. Tatsu. Which means to stand or to rise. Next, we have I, I. This comes from the verb au, au. This means to meet, to join, or to match. It often implies coming together. What do sumo wrestlers do at the touchy eye? They simply stand up and meet each other. That is the literal meaning of touchy eye to stand and meet each other. It's a crucial moment in sumo as it sets the tone for the rest of the bout. But how can we use this word aside sumo? Tachiai can also mean facing someone or confrontation in a broader sense. Example, kare to tachiai ni naru. Kare to tachiai ni naru. Kare means he. Kare to. To in this context means wet. Tachiai. Tachiai. Tachiai means confrontation. Ni naru. Ni naru means to become. So the whole sentence means I will face him in a confrontation. Kare to. Tachiai ni naru. Kare to. Tachiai ni naru. You can also use tachiai in the meeting contest. Tachiai no bade hanashimashou. Tachiai no bade hanashimashou. Tachiai in this contest means meeting. No means possessive and the ba here means please. De means the means of doing something. Hanashimashou. Hanashimas means to speak or to talk. So masho added to hanashimas makes it hanashimasho, which means let's talk. So tachiai no bade hanashimasho means let's discuss it at the meeting place. Tachiai combines the ideas of standing and meeting to create a word that represents moments of interaction whether in sumo confrontation or general meetings that is it guys thank you for watching this video don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know in the comment section what video we should dive into next thank you and see you in the next one